Hey everyone, I'm Thomas and today we're going to build this walnut desk clock. Now I used walnut but you can use really any wood you have on hand and I'll show you how I did the markers which is a really cool and simple way um, instead of numbers and I made mistakes as I always do but I'll show you how I fixed them. Let's get to it. First start by cutting your wood to size using the miter saw first and then ripping it on the table saw. After doing this, I noticed some cracks and knots in my lumber, so I filled them using epoxy, and I mixed some black pigment in there so that I could have a nice, clean black look. I'll link the pigment I used for this in the description, as well as all the other tools and materials I used. I don't have a fancy torch or a not fancy torch, so I used a lighter to get rid of all the bubbles that can appear when using epoxy. I always cut my projects to rough size initially, but now it's time to cut it to the size it's going to be for the end product. This clock will end up being about five and a half inches by five and a half inches, and that's just a size that I came up with that fits nice in my house. I used my six inch square from DFM Tools to get the center of the clock, and I did this by marking two lines from corner to corner. Then I needed to mark where the four clock markers are going to be. I did this by drawing two lines, cutting the clock in half, one vertical and one horizontal. I really like how I did the markers on this clock and it is a super simple way to do it. I drilled four holes with my Forstner bit at 12, 3, 6, and 9, and fill those holes with epoxy. Those holes don't need to be very deep because you're going to be filling them with black epoxy, and you'll have to use less epoxy if you don't drill them as deep. And I'm using the same pigment for the epoxy that I did earlier in the video when I was filling the knots and the cracks. This part of the video you could literally say is fire. Sand the epoxy flush and you're almost done with the clock at this point. Drill a hole through the middle where you marked the exact middle of the clock and then you're going to trace where the mechanism will go on the back of the clock. I'm using a half inch straight cut bit to bore out the back of the clock where the mechanism is going to go so it can be pretty much invisible. Now this may look like the front of the clock, but I messed up on one side and so I flipped it over and that just became the back. Put a nice little 45 degree chamfer on the front because, well, chamfers are amazing and I wish you happy chamfering for the rest of your days. So this clock started at an inch and three quarters thick, but I quickly realized that my half inch straight cut bit would not go deep enough for the clock mechanism uh, in my router. So I had to resaw this piece to now it's about an inch and a quarter. So I had to take about a half inch off. So when you're making this clock, make sure that your straight cut bit to bore out the hole for the clock me mechanism goes down deep enough and you may have to make your clock maybe an inch or an inch and a quarter thick. To finish this project, I'm using deft spray lacquer because it's so easy and plenty durable for this application. Make sure to spray the edges twice as much as you spray the faces because the edge and the end grain soak up this stuff so much. If you want a few more details on finishing with spray lacquer, I'll put a video right here that I made about it. For the last part of the clock build, it's really as simple as following the instructions on installing the clock mechanism that you purchased. We are done. Now it's just time for the beauty shots.
And we're back. Hey, thanks so much for watching. One thing I want to mention before I let you go is the mechanism I bought has a really short shaft and I didn't realize you can buy clock mechanisms with longer shafts. So get one that's longer so you don't have to bore out such a big hole that I did. Uh, so that would be my recommendation. I'll put a link to this one in the description along with all the other tools and accessories I use, but get one with a longer shaft that'll make your life a lot easier. Now, thanks so much for watching again. And if you could subscribe, that'd be really awesome. I try and put out content every week or two. So hopefully I'll see you soon.